want to uh, introduce this session. But before that, I would ask uh, Father Abdul to say just a word of welcome to all our guests. Revered uh, Chance and uh, distinguished guests and uh, dear friends. I wouldn't take much of your time because uh, uh, following the big term about the Aryan theology, which uh, is, there was a time when he was known. I would say, I hope Father George will not get angry with me when if I say that. I will say for all of us, all of us, in our theological journey, if I want to say something about Father George, I would say that there was not a time when he was not. Uh, Achim was always there for us. The reason that I was telling this is that uh, Mr. Jyoti Sahi, as an artist theologian, has been introduced to us when we were reading silent, Father George's silent rooms in 1997 when we were uh, doing our second year theology in our seminary. Uh, both of their friendship, if I if I'm informed correctly, it has it is it has gone back to uh, late 1970s. So this evening is a, quite a, a blessing for all of us in uh, organizing, getting organized. This is just a, a word of welcome to all of you, especially uh, artist theology, Mr. Jodi Saki, and our guest, Mr. Bertrand Bernard Kilroy. Thank you very much, and of course. And uh, this evening has been organized in, uh, jointly by Sarubia School of Arts and uh, Sopana Theological Academy. And it goes without saying that both of these endeavors have been founded by Father George. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rebech. And I just uh, want briefly to introduce our uh, two guests. Uh, you know uh, Dr. Bernard Kilroy, he is the well-known editor of this book, which we will discuss today, particularly the illustrations uh, done by Jodi Sahi. Uh, Sahi quotes from apostolic times. So, and not only uh, he is showing it, but uh, he has reduced the price for you particularly, and then he has given uh, how many books you bought? Already ten. Okay. So you have to get yeah, a hurry. Otherwise, uh, they yes, yes. Yes. Uh, he has terribly reduced the price to two hundred rupees. He has a beautiful book. Uh, you know, uh, some of you had been to Kurishimala Ashram, and I am sure none of you have seen uh, Father Pip Griffiths or Father Francis Adaria. Probably Francis Adaria because he died only a few years ago. They founded this ashram many years ago, probably 70 years ago, when it was just Yudans in that area. I remember as a theological student, as a Secretary for Theological Association, I uh, used to invite both Father Francis and Father Griffiths to talk to students in the seminary. Uh, I was uh, at that time very fascinated by the writings of these two Benedict King Kings, from, one from England and one from um, Belgium. So, Father, um, uh, not, I mean, you can call him Father. <laughs> yes, I have all respect him. <laughs> yes, Dr. Bernard had been associated with uh, Father Francis' writings. He did this uh, beautiful translation for his own meditation. But now Bernard has edited it with uh, commentaries so that the whole thing has become a uh, universal uh, classic now, also Solomon, did the meditations and he has done it wonderfully. Uh, he has the, uh, the, the certificate of Dr. Sebastian Broke as well. So you can have his book. Uh, thank you, Bernard, for coming and raising this occasion. Now, our speaker today, Yodi uh, Sahi, as uh, Father Eddie told us, our friendship goes back to probably more than uh, one of a century. I was always impressed by not only his artistic uh, work, but his theological writings. I think among the artists, he is unique uh, in being able to write on art. So both the paintings, as well as his uh, uh, writings, uh, inspired me a lot. That's 
I told many, many years ago one of my books. And Jyoti Sai has already spoken to our students several years ago. He is a, he's a good friend of the seminary and he visits our time whenever it is possible. This day also when I met him in Bangalore, he told me that he would come to uh, Sri meetings so he organized this. Sopana is something very new, just for the, it's a Sanskrit word, but Sopana means stepping stones. And Jodi has a book under that title, which he wrote many, many years ago, Stepping Stones. But Sopana as a stepping stone, is particularly the stepping stones uh, leading to the early of bodies. In a, in a, in a temple, Hindu temple, you have the, the sanctuary, the holy of holy, the Sri Bhavi. So these steps lead finally to the uh, to the shrine, the holy of holies. Um, there is a music called Sopana music in India. So the musicians with the instruments, they stand on these stepping stones and play music in praise of gods or goddesses. They never enter the shrine. This is the idea also in Christian theology and Orthodox theology. Our historical life is on the Sopana, on the stepping stones. He never entered the body of holies in a true uh, metaphysical or the logical sense. We invoke the deity, we praise God, but we never enter the knowledge of God in its fullness. We stand on the stepping stones. So Sopana, on the stepping stones you deal with the history. You deal with uh, all human suffering, all joy, everything. You know. Whatever we experience in the world is also experienced and dealt with at the Sopana level. And Sarupya, of course, you know, knows that Sarupya is likeness. We are created in God's image and likeness. And again, uh, not only art, but all human affairs, including theology, has a task of uh, achieving this likeness of God. That is our spiritual mission. We are on a journey and we, we acquire God's likeness. Uh, that is the ultimate vocation for us. So both Sarupya and Sopana are concerned with art and culture in a very broad sense. As I said yesterday at Siri, uh, I would say that uh, it is not systematic theology, but art in its various forms that uh, gives you a glimpse of the knowledge of God. Systematic theology uh, unfortunately fails. Academic theology does not, hasn't given me any idea of God except some formulas uh, and equations. But art has opened a new way uh, and I am very grateful that people like uh, uh, Jodi Sahi have helped me a lot in the pilgrimage. So Jodi, may I invite you to, to say a few words and also show the illustrations. Thank you very much for your introduction. I, I would say it is not appropriate time for discursive reasoning or discussion or debate, but a time for meditation because these pictures, uh, together with the poems of Kabir and quotations from the Odes, they have given us a wonderful time of meditation. And we should continue that. We should continue that. I, I have read a little bit of Kabir, but it's now that I see the, the, the profundity of his uh, poetic, mystical writings. Still, uh, since you are students, uh, and Gaudi is with us, he may also raise some of your questions or qualification as well. is also related to the body. Dancing is very much body. And especially in tribal cultures, uh, dance is very important. So, uh, in fact, there is another uh, work, which is probably the same time as the Odes, which is called the Acts of John. Uh, it is an apocryphal work. And it is said in the Acts of John, that Jesus at the Last Supper, he called the disciple and said, Come, 
dance with me. I am the Lord of the dance. Uh, it, it, those are the words. And, and there is a hymn, a song, uh, a Christian song about I am the Lord of the dance. And he, uh, you know, you have heard of that. It is a popular song. So <clears throat> this, uh, of course, has relationship also to me. Because uh, my daughter, she has studied dance. And the uh, theme of uh, dancing has been related to Shiva. He is also called Nataraja, Lord of the Dance. But it is not only Shiva. Shiva probably takes up a primordial theme which is to be found in tribal culture and so on, where the drum and the dancer is very important. Uh, so uh, this, in, in fact, even Augustine talk, talks about pericuris, uh, the, the, the chorus who go round, uh, because in the old uh, Greek theater, the chorus used to go round. So he says the trinity. So uh, I think that this theme of dancing is a, a good connection again with many ideas of Buddhism. I think also you should connect it with the resurrection because the Lucent Christ is in a dance, dancing poster. You know the major problem of our body, or the character of the body, is that it is weighed down by the pull of gravity, always weighed down. But the Sun Christ is actually uh, you know, violating that pull of gravity and is rising lightly. Uh, and the bird image is also very close to that. The Holy Spirit is not kind of a bird. You know, a bird also can uh, go against gravity in a very smooth, elegant way. So I think all these uh, dance forms always reminds me of the selection for the Sun Christ. of Christian art, uh, I feel that it's not just a question of painting Christ. Uh, it's a question of having a, a kind of spirituality, a sadhana, uh, which should underlie, uh, and that was with the icon painters, they saw it as a, a, a spiritual way, a spiritual journey. Uh, and so, the I, for me, uh, even in working on these uh, designs, thinking about the relationship we, all the time when I was reading the, um, the odes, I was also thinking about Kabir because uh, I belong to something which is called the Kabir Project, Kabir Satsang. Uh, so, and that has uh, been very important to me. So, uh, even in choosing the passages from the odes, I was always thinking of Kabir. So, it is this kind of bringing uh, a, a spiritual dimension to art expression. I think that is uh, what is important. Uh, not just art as skill or technique, but art as uh, a, a spiritual journey, uh, like you were saying, uh, on stepping stones. Syrian liturgy, which we celebrate, I am reminded of this posture of dancing, especially you know when you give peace. You can give peace in different ways. You can just throw peace to the people even without telling you. Know. But actually, if you if you can draw the lines, you know, because your body slightly turns to the west and your hands, you know. It hovers over the over the holy elements uh, like that, and then it comes like that, and then it goes like that. So if you make a little drawing of that, it's a beautiful rhythmic. It's very poetic, and it would be in a in a dance posture. You know. So 
in the ginger tea, we do have a lot of effort, but of course there are people who do like that, you know, people <laughs> like that, which is uh, shooting, you know, not that they are giving peace. <laughs> Um, and I hope you will discover uh, some of these things in this book edited by uh, Bernard because uh, the, the writer has really captured the mystical, poetic, uh, the artistic elements as well. If you have anything more to share, uh, uh, I just uh, need to appreciate uh, especially this art because uh, as I've studied iconography and uh, the problem with icons is that we have limited ourselves and we cannot go beyond certain things. But in this uh, Christian art, it has gone beyond certain things which are very easy to relate. But certain times, because of our faith or we are limited to ourselves. Like I like the uh, painting of the pomegranate, which has pomegranate itself, which I never thought about. So it's about the soul. So it's, it's, uh, it's something which has attracted me totally. And now I think that whenever I see that fruit, it will relate to me with uh, this. So it is something that's a creation of God, which can be related to us back in getting the knowledge about what the creation of God is, that he has put up his own concept. Acha, uh, I would like to ask you if um, resurrection is going against the principle of gravity, what about his carnation at epiclesis? Is that working along with gravity? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is what's interesting about this dancing on the water. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, almost sinking because he went down. Gravity pulled him into water. And Jesus goes down into the Tehom. In fact, there is a whole talk I could uh, discuss this name uh, by George Suarez, who was a chief. <coughs> One aspect of this story is that <coughs> the uh, Christ walking on the waters <coughs> is not just a miracle, it is him. Um, going against the storm, going against the, the uh, problems of life, you know, uh, and <coughs> uh, inviting his disciples to uh, overcome that storm. That's the bloody deal. The epitaph is said that the Holy Spirit is actually coming down. Uh, but the Holy Spirit is not falling down, you know. Uh, I was in Korea last week and uh, we were in a 500 acre monastery uh, of the Confucian tradition. Very beautiful, wonderful. And we were introduced to Confucianism by a traditional philosopher who knew no English but spoke only in Korean. And then he spoke about yin and yang, you know, the Tao, the Tao symbol of yin and yang, male and female, and combining all the dualities into, into one. And then we came out of that uh, monastery uh, after, a, uh, after two sessions with the philosopher. And coming out, we were going through a valley in a, in a bus, and then both sides you have the green mountains. Then I suddenly saw a seagull, you know, Kadalkaka, Actually, it is playing with air. It is, it is playing with the whole world. And then we play a dancer. And the Holy Holy Spirit play a prayer. Actually, it is not falling. It is falling in the Good dancer uh, who have trained hands and fingers. 
That was the idea behind this painting, uh, uh, yeah. which is the there's a mountain there, and the bird is this movement, uh, which is going over the mountain, and here is water below, with the fishes uh, in the water, but uh, this uh, coming together of the movement of the bird, the movement of the fishes, and the mountain in the middle. Yes, it's very beautiful. Yes, I think. Just captured what he said.